Hi all, what I'd like to do today is take a look at what I consider to be quite an interesting market, the E-mini Nikkei 225 trading on the Osaka Securities Exchange in Japan. One of the things that makes this an interesting market is that there's a lot of US traders that have full-time day jobs and want to trade after work. And there's not really much available for them as the US markets are really quiet in the US evenings. Then there's a lot of Australian and Asian traders, Hong Kong, Singapore, even Thailand, they don't have access to a market with decent liquidity and volatility in their morning time. Many brokers don't cover the Asian markets well, and a lot of the Asian markets are very thin and volatile. Many traders feel comfortable with thicker markets like the E-mini S&P 500, and that effectively is what the E-mini Nikkei 225 is. And the market opens at 9 a.m. Osaka time, and 9 a.m. Osaka time right now is 8 p.m. Eastern time or 5 p.m. Pacific. And that means for people in the US, the first session of the week actually starts on Sunday evening. And there's another benefit for aspiring traders with day jobs. You have a market with good volume and good liquidity that you can actually trade on a Sunday. The market closes at 3.15 p.m. Osaka time, but just for an hour and 15 minutes and opens again at 4.30 in the afternoon. And it stays open till 3 a.m. Osaka time the next day, presumably to take advantage of US day session traders. Now in terms of liquidity and volatility, this market's very close to the E-mini S&P 500. Volume-wise, we trade from 750,000 to over a million contracts a day, which is very high and higher than most US futures markets. Now what you're seeing here is the Multicharts.net Special Edition platform with the CQG demo account, and the Mini Nikkei 225 does come on the CQG demo accounts. You're actually looking at the open of the market here. Now on this screen, we can see the Multicharts chart window, with the free ARPS Universal Swing Tool and volume uh, bars. We also have the Jigsaw Depth and Sales, Recon Tape, the Power Meters and Auction Vista Chart. So in terms of add-ons and indicators, there's really nothing unique about the Mini Nikkei, so expect everything you've got now to work on that instrument. Now if you look at the size trading here, there's plenty of trades over 100 contracts. We can see there's lots of liquidity there too, with hundreds of contracts a level. Now I don't trade this market myself, but this market is now available to trade at US brokerages. In this example, I'm using a demo account from AMP. This market basically opens up a little bit too early for me. It opens at 7 a.m. my time, but I have been asked about this market by a number of traders and hence this video. Now, if you do trade it, you will need to set up a custom session template in Multicharts, and here's mine. Now, in this video, we're about five minutes after the open. We can see the S&P 500 over on the left. If you compare the two, the S&P 500 looks really lethargic and there's, there's really not much trade going through at all, but the Nikkei is very active. Now I've been watching the open on this market over the past few weeks and in that time I have noticed a tendency to mark out a range early on and then break that range and become more volatile. Whether that's normal behaviour or just the past few weeks, I don't know yet, but we'll continue to observe. Now, a lot of people have asked if this market actually trades like US markets and I've been observing it from that perspective to see how it does. So here we are after the breakdown. I said earlier that the Nikkei tends to put in a small range off the open and then breaks down and we see volatility in both directions. We still have the S&P 500 futures over on the left for comparison and it's still really slow there. And what we can see is we've come down to an area of high buy side liquidity and we have a run of large trade circles. And we're about to move up through that area and that potentially means late sellers are getting trapped and are going to get stopped out. Now for those of you that saw the 2020 Market Vision webinar, you'll know that this is where I see safer opportunities to take a trade as the traders in this area get stopped out. So let's put in a SIM trade here and see if we can manage it as we would a trade on the S&P 500. One of the things we look for when in a trade is for order flow to be on our side. Some more green on the recon tape in the bottom right and more blue on the strength meter and larger size on the current trades on the buy side. Now as expected, trade is fairly balanced until we pop through the top of the high volume range which we can see on the volume profile or by looking at the top circle in that runner circles that indicated bidder absorption. So compared to the S&P 500 it's similar. I do see that in this case the imbalance is slightly smaller than we'd expect on the S&P 500. Usually would expect one and a half times bias to sellers or two times bias to sellers but you know this is just one example. So we got our pop-up, and now we'd be looking at the next area of high volume above us, 
again denoted both on the volume profile and the upper group of large circles as a point of potential resistance. As it got up there, momentum simply faded away. And you can see that I put in an offer at 17,295 because of that lack of momentum. Now bear in mind that most of the time I'm trading the S&P 500 and I've just been looking at this market for a couple of weeks and at the time I actually put in that offer, it felt to me very much like trading the S&P 500 futures in terms of seeing the buyers lose momentum. So in terms of how the volume profile builds, in terms of how the large trade circles build, how the swings develop on the swing chart, I felt quite comfortable applying the methods I'd used on the S&P 500 to this market. Well, obviously I'm not going to feel uncomfortable with the sim trade anyway, so perhaps a better explanation is that I felt that this was playing out as I'd expect the S&P 500 futures to play out in terms of pace of the market, trap traders and momentum. Now my casual observation is that this would be a good crossover market for someone trading the S&P 500 futures or perhaps someone that's trading the Bund or Euro stocks on Eurex. It's a little bit faster than US Treasuries and it's a little bit slower than crude. Certainly for trading the US evenings, I can't think of a market that comes close to it. You can also trade with very low risk. Each five point tick is worth 500 yen, which is about $4.60. So you can trade with about a third of the risk per tick compared to the S&P 500 futures. In addition, because there is so much liquidity, you could also trade size. There are trades of hundreds of contracts going through here, and so it's a market where you can scale up and trade some size. So a 50 contract clip here isn't going to move the market at all, shouldn't see you with serious slippage. So I expect the Nikkei 225 to become a much more popular market with US traders, especially beginners. The open times, the volatility, and relatively low risk make it a strong candidate for those new to the futures markets and those with experience looking to trade the US evenings. Thank you.